um, for, for just being available to do this. So thank you. Um, today, Trish is going to cover uh, Bookkeeping 101, but really um, through QuickBooks. So any QuickBook questions that you have or any questions related to bookkeeping, Trish is going to be able to answer those during her presentation. So feel free to utilize the chat box or unmute yourself and, and we can you know, get that dialogue started. Um, so without further ado, I'm just going to pass it over to Trisha so I don't take any more of her time. Um, but yeah, don't forget to utilize the chat box if you have questions. Great. Um, so my name is Trisha McCullough, and I'm the owner of August Edge um, PLLC. It's a CPA firm. I have um, been doing accounting since, or started on my own since 1997, and I've been in the Valley for uh, approximately 14 years now. Um, anyway, so one of the things that uh, I also have done is teach QuickBooks to across many different states and, and my own my own uh, classes, not anything that Intuit um, provided. And it's been a while since I've done some teaching and this really is QuickBooks 101 or Bookkeeping 101 and generally I like to get an idea of, um, you know, who I'm, who I'm teaching it to, like just the industries that are on here. But I am going to just, before I start to ask some of those questions, um, because I'd like to answer things that you may have questions about. Um, I do want to just talk in uh, just very quickly some general um, things about the QuickBooks process, uh, program. Um, the QuickBooks program, there's many different versions of QuickBooks, which I'm sure that you realize um, there is uh, the biggest difference is there's QuickBooks Online, there's QuickBooks Desktop, and there is um, within those two different versions, uh, QuickBooks Online has, has its own series, um, and QuickBooks Desktop has their own series of Desktop, QuickBooks Pro, QuickBooks Premier, QuickBooks Enterprise. QuickBooks Pro is the uh, most commonly used uh, software. Premiere is a little bit fancier. I don't think it's worth the money. Um, it is for me as an accountant because it has accounting tools in it, uh, but generally it's it's not necessary, necessary, for, necessary for most businesses. And, and it's a funny thing, if you buy QuickBooks Pro or QuickBooks Premiere, you can actually, uh, the accountant version, you can actually toggle back and forth to every version of QuickBooks, which is kind of funny because it's the same price. Anyway, um, the uh, QuickBooks Online is constantly evolving. They change they change how you work in QuickBooks constantly. So it's it's um, a little bit frustrating for for myself because I learn it one way and then it's totally different. But it is great that it's an online program and it's web based. Uh, a lot of my clients will use QuickBooks Online. The disadvantage of QuickBooks Online, and I would say there's two, three major disadvantages of QuickBooks Online um, overall. And then there's specific issues with QuickBooks Online with uh, for certain industries. So QuickBooks Online, um, you cannot control the sales tax function. Um, and, it, and they download every single sales tax out there in whatever a state you're using and you have no control over what sales tax items that are created. Um, and that can be overwhelming. Um, QuickBooks Online costs a lot of money if you have payroll. Um, so, cause it costs per, per employee per check. Um, and also QuickBooks Online has a monthly fee. So it's more expensive than QuickBooks Desktop. Um, then the other feature that's difficult with QuickBooks Online is you actually have no control over payroll. So if you, for example, if you make a mistake, you have to call and you've issued a paycheck, you have to call QuickBooks to, um, to get them to fix the paycheck. So, you know, I do see it being, you know, Intuit is pushing, that's where they all want us to go is QuickBooks Online, they make more money that way. Um, and, you know, it, it's more modern. Uh, what we've done with QuickBooks Desktop for a lot of my clients is that we have utilized the cloud feature where we're meaning that we rent space on a, um, a uh, server that is um, an encrypted protected server 
and we put the QuickBooks desktop on that server and the client dials in and we can dial in at the same time. So it basically becomes QuickBooks online, but it's a better version. Um, when you buy QuickBooks desktop, you it's good for three years. They sunset it after three years. Um, and um, you have, but you don't have to buy it every year. So you can use the same version for three years. And after three years, if you have payroll, you have to buy a new version. But if you don't have payroll, you can continue to use your QuickBooks software forever. They just won't support uh, you with technical support. Okay. Um, so I don't know if that helps answer. The, one other quick thing, if you don't know uh, QuickBooks, desktop does have a, a cost, an annual cost for the payroll subscription, which is, I don't even remember what it is actually, it's expensive, but it's like 400 or something dollars a year. So that is the one thing, it's still cheaper than QuickBooks Online. I do like both of the programs um, and I've used QuickBooks since, uh, wow, I don't know if I wanna tell you, um, 19, 9, 18, 1989, I think, um, the first time I pulled it off the shelf, I put it right, I used it, got, put it on my machine and then I put it right back, returned it to the store and said I hated it. Then I tried a few other programs and they were worse. So I went back to QuickBooks and I really learned everything the hard way. One of the things I would tell you about QuickBooks is, um, and I have to answer some bookkeeping issues here, is that if you make a mistake, only like 99% of any mistake you make can be fixed. Um, the most important thing of when you get started in, in uh, accounting or, or in using the software is that you want it set up right. It's worth $125, it's worth $250 to have someone go in and set you up for your specific company to have it set up right because it will save so many mistakes in the future. Um, it's really worth getting some help when you're getting started. Some of you, um, you know, may own your own businesses. Some of you are bookkeepers for businesses. Um, and you may have inherited a mess or you may have inherited, or you may have made your own mess. Um, what I encourage it, I, it's one thing I'm very proficient at is cleaning up QuickBooks. And I can also tell you how to clean up QuickBooks. Um, but on the uh, counting side of things, um, what would we tell you about the QuickBooks software versus Quicken, or um, maybe even there's other online programs such as uh, FreshBooks, Xero, um, and they're not as robust. Each one of like Zero or FreshBooks has an amazing, amazing feature that QuickBooks Online doesn't have, but they don't have the whole package. So it's, they're still evolving. Uh, and the one great thing about QuickBooks Online is, is that it automatically can sync to other programs like your POS system. If you're in a restaurant or a manufacturing firm or a furniture store or whatever, you can sync those together. Um, that's an amazing feature. It's a lot easier to do it that way than to use the desktop version. So I would, you know, if anybody wants to volunteer, I want to, I can spend a lot of time on stuff you may not even care about, but I also really want to answer if you have specific questions that you can just sort of like raise your hand and um, then unmute your, raise your hand and then we'll ask the question. So if any, does anybody want to go with that? Anybody? Bye. <laughs> Go ahead, Emma. Okay, with that being said, um, I'm just going to show you some basics. So I'm going to turn on, share my screen. And, uh, and you may interrupt me at any time if you have a specific question. Um, so I'd like it to be sort of fluid. I'm going to go here and share the screen. Do you see, do you, do you see QuickBooks? Um, I see your screen, but I don't see. Do you see uh, at the very top um, software that says file edit view? Um, there's icons in the middle. No, I think you'll have to do this yeah. your screen again. Happens to be once before. 
Do you see it now? Nope. Try it again. Do you see the screen now? Yes. Okay. So really, I'm just, you know, like I said, this is 101 and, and, I, and if you have more advanced questions, please, please ask. Um, I've used this on hundreds and hundreds of companies. So um, over the years, um, right away in this new version of the newer versions of QuickBooks, they have this uh, um, sort of shortcut list on the left-hand side. And um, I really feel like that is redundant and it's always in the way it's taking up your screen space. Um, and I just want to walk you through um, some things, some settings that you may want to do immediately when you start your QuickBooks company or even go back if you've already have a company set up and check on these preferences because they really, really help. Um, before I do that, I do want to point out the, the home screen. Um, I don't use the home screen because only because there's nothing wrong with it, but only because I have to stay consistent when I'm talking over the phone or trying to walk somebody through how to use QuickBooks. But essentially there is an icon. Um, there, if there's one way to access a screen, a different screen or a different area of QuickBooks, there's probably 15 ways to get to the same thing. So, but the, what I, so I don't really use this home screen, but please do use it if you're comfortable. But what I really, really like about it is it tells you the workflow. And that being said, um, here, if I were to start with entering a bill, I must go to the, so we're, follow the arrows, I must go to pay bills. I cannot go to enter a bill and then go over here. Do you see my mouse? Yes. Okay. I can't go from over here at enter bills to exactly to write checks. There's no line there. <laughs> it just doesn't work. You cannot do that. Um, if I create an if I create an estimate, I can automatically turn it into an invoice. And then from an invoice, I have to receive the payment. I have to go through what's called receive payments. And then if I um, receive the payment, then I'm going to record the deposit. So I can't just go from invoice and take a little loop over here to record deposit. I cannot do that. So you really work. This workflow is very helpful. So now I'm just going to go this really basic, but it's very helpful if you go to edit and um, at the top and then you go to preferences um, in the general, there's always the my preferences and company preferences. If you have multiple users, you can have um, uh, multi, uh, multi user mode, I think up to two users for free, and then you may have to start buying um, different seats. So if you click on press enter between field. Uh, check on press enter moves between fields. This is when your enter key becomes a tab key. So what it does is instead of when you press enter, if you don't check on this, it'll when you press enter, it will close the screen. So this just lets you keep moving within the screen. And then you want to check on automatically recall last transaction for this name. That um, that is better than pre-fill accounts for vendors based on past entries. Automatically recall last transactions. So it's like if you don't pay your utility bill, it'll just come up. You put the name in, it'll put the account in, it'll put the amount that it was last time you just changed the amount. So it's just filling things in for you. That is extremely helpful. Then this is really, really important um, because 99% of the time when you can't find a transaction that you just entered is always a date issue, always a date issue. Um, so if you change it, unless you're, unless you're going back in time and recreating, you know, um, 2020 books, that's the only time I might leave it on use last entry date. But if you change it to use to, you, you should have it on use today's date as a default. This will help you know, like you just entered the transaction. I mean, what's really common is when we go from December to January, we're still entering the year, like uh, when we go from December 31st, 2020, and then we hit January, 2021, we're all, sometimes we're automatically entry 20 and we lose the transaction. So, so it's easier if you have this setting. Um, then from there, if you go to desktop view, 
Um, I'm going to save these pref preferences. If you go to desktop view, um, what's really nice is this is an older version, so QuickBooks is how it looked. Switch to colored icons and um, on the top. And that's going to take this sidebar over here and it's going to put it up here. This will give you more screen. So if you, uh, and also, I prefer multi multiple windows. It's usually set for that, so you're good. This is one window where you can only see one screen at a time. So I think it's very helpful to um, use multiple windows. So then um, one thing in accounting, so we're gonna save this. Um, and, and I should just tell you, I mean, if you, in desktop view again, you can change your settings of what um, you want your colors to be for your for your QuickBooks file. That's just right there. So um, I'm going to save OK, and then I'm going to go back into Preferences, and I'm going to go to Accounting. And I'm actually in a multi-user mode. I need to be in single-user mode to do most of this. So what that means, multi-user mode, is I can have two people in at one time before buying additional licenses. So I'm going to file here and I'm going to switch to single user mode. It's like giving admin rights. So I'm going to do that so I can continue. Um, when I'm, while I'm doing that, I want to talk to you about some things. If um, some people, uh, just because they think it, it works really well, in your bank account, um, you can you are, have the ability to enter checks right into the register. And I would strongly suggest you don't do that. Um, that you actually go to, if, if, if you've had any QuickBooks experience, you actually go to banking at the top menu and do write checks and use the check screen. And the reason for that is um, you would not believe the strange things that QuickBooks will do in reports. Strange things will show up. like. Uh, for example, you say it's local tell and it'll say it's something else, like it'll say it's um, McDonald's. It, it, it has no bearing to what that transaction is. So that's why I suggest don't use, don't go directly into the check register. Um, sometimes uh, people get confused by the concept of where it says receive payments. This is taking a while. Um, I just want to say that receive payments is like uh, if you get multiple checks in the mail, you're going to want to put them on one deposit slip, you know, a long deposit slip. So as you receive a payment against the invoices, you may be receiving many payments, and then you want to receive them all at one time into that match that deposit slip that you're taking to the bank. So you don't need to receive, make deposit, receive, make deposit. You receive all of those into one. And some people, and I, I, I know it's kind of funny, but uh, I would just tell this little story. I think I was teaching in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and um, I, I, I was uh, helping a girl there. They hired me after I was teaching, and she was recreating a company file that, that had got destroyed, but they had a backup and she was using that. Anyway, she um, was entering transactions, like writing a check, and she, was using the account, assigning the transaction or check to an account called dash split dash. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen split. That's a, the word kind of used a lot in QuickBooks. I have no idea why this is taking so long. Um, so if you've seen, she was just looking at a printout of the check register and it said split. So she created an account called split, which means nothing. Um, split, when you see that in a report, it simply means there are more than one trend, more than one account was used in that transaction. Um, then uh, just in, in general, I'm gonna talk about things in general because I might have to shut this part down. <laughs> um, but in general, there are features in QuickBooks that is important to understand, especially when you're building your company. And that is um, the difference is you, you have your chart of accounts and your, hang on just a second. You have your chart of accounts and your um, 
your target accounts is basically where your transactions are recorded in their your income and ex, their, your your assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expenses. Well, um, that can be daunting if you say, "Oh, I need to have, I need to to create my chart of accounts." If if you don't have a lot of experience in that, um, but it um, if when you set up a new company in QuickBooks, it kind of asks you what industry you are in, and they will dump uh, exam samples chart of accounts in there, and then you can go with that. So I'm just going to talk about chart of accounts as being sort of a vertical list. Um, the next list that they have is uh, is a uh, classes. Classes are used in a lot of transactions. Um, and classes, I would say, is, is kind of a horizontal list. And what classes are used a lot for is uh, to, to record transactions in uh, like a profit and loss per profit center. So if I was a, um, this works with classes are really important for nonprofits that receive grants. But if I were to, I'm going to stop sharing and try and fix this while I talk. Um, if I were to, um, oh, that's it. Our internet went. No, my internet couldn't have gone down. Um, if if I were to have a business, then I had uh, like a retail business, and I had a store in Wenatchee and I had a store in um, Moses Lake. Well, it's the same retail store. I just have different locations, so I would have my chart of accounts, and then I would have a horizontally, I would have Moses Lake store and Wenatchee store. So they're profit centers, and that's how you treat a class, or that's why you would use a class. Um, so we're gonna try this again. Then um, the other type of list that's important in QuickBooks, and people don't really understand the power of this list, is that um, it's, what's called items. And the word item is not an accounting term, it's a QuickBooks term, but the way I look at an item or one way to describe an item, items are the most powerful thing in QuickBooks, is that you have to have an item in order to even create an invoice. Um, and, okay, we're just gonna do it this way. Um, so, but an item, what I would, in general terms, is I would explain it as um, the, um, like in your chart of accounts, you have, uh, you have your main accounts, right? So you may have automobile expense and underneath that you'll have fuel, you'll have gas, you, I mean, it's the same thing. You'll have fuel, you'll have uh, repairs and maintenance, maybe insurance. So you, you, you have a main account and you have a sub account. And what I really, really um, would like to have you avoid when you're setting up um, your QuickBooks is that not to have a sub account of a sub account. And I'm also going to tell you that um, never have a sub account of a bank account. Never have a sub account of a bank account. Um, so don't have one bank account. Under, under your bank account. But you can have generally anywhere, you can have a main account and a sub account. Now where items come into play is that they, um, they, they are like the sub account of the sub account. Um, so they are like the, I don't know, sub sub account. Um, and so if you just think for a moment, they are, um, If you were building a home, you would want to know how much your construction material costs. And you would want to know how much uh, your subcontractors cost. <clears throat> and you would want to, uh, but as you're building the home, you want to, you don't, when you build a profit and loss, you really don't want to show uh, that you really don't want to show the, um, that how much in, in your financial statement that you give to the bank, you don't want to show, well, this is how much the concrete costs. 
and this is how much the flooring cost, and this is what the appliances cost. You really, that's just way too much detail in your profit and loss, you, and you give as minimal information as you can to a financial institution. And um, so, so where a sub, a, an item comes into play is that it, the item will, will be directly tied to the account, to the account in the chart of accounts, it will be directly tied to that and it may say flooring, but in, but then the, the, so you can pull a report that has all the detail, but it's not on your profit and loss. So I'm in just general terms, I'm trying to say that you can have a sub account of a sub account that you can have, but it would be called an item. Okay, so I just I just uh, typed a message to IT because you know of course if I'm doing a class I'm going to have problems. <laughs> anyway, um, I want to demonstrate what I'm talking about with the classes, and I also want to put out there that if you don't, the most commonly used class is uh, the the type service. Um, you know, in your chart of accounts, you have um, an account that's a bank account, or you, you have an account that's an asset, or you have an account that's a liability. Um, in items, they have their they have types as well, and they are they don't they don't um, have accounting terminology. So an item can be um, the types are service. Um, so like if you had uh, your type and you, you wanted to say expense uh, in your chart of accounts, an item can be the types are service, um, uh, uh, I forget what the other one, service, inventory, non-inventory, and uh, the other one is other, uh, other, I can't remember the name, sorry, I apologize. And the reason why I don't remember the name is because I never use anything um, than service. Uh, and the service type can, uh, it, the only other time that you really need to use a different type of item is if you have an inventory item. And what I'm going to tell you is that QuickBooks is horrible at inventory. And, and if you have inventory issues, I would, uh, inventory in your, your business, I would really look for you, I would really suggest that you um, utilize a different system like um, like a POS system or a specific inventory system because um, inventory or in QuickBooks, unless you buy enterprise, QuickBooks Enterprise, which is a desktop version, is about $3,000 and it's QuickBooks on steroids. Uh, it holds 5,000 times more information. Um, I set it up for the Colville Ending Housing Authority and I had 20 people logging in at one time. So that's, that's a big software. Um, so, um, so anyway, um, it's not, it's not a commonly used software, but in that software, you can use, uh, you can use inventory, you can use in the inventory items. Anyway, so I'm getting my, um, IT is helping me right now. I'm getting my server back up. So the types of items, um, Service items can be can be um, can be both an expense and both an income item, and I'll show you how. So, so when you're using an item um, and you want to invoice, like you're in the construction business and you want to invoice somebody for you know general remodeling, or you want to invoice them, you know, like time and materials. You want to invoice them for, um, let's say, I'm going to invoice them for uh, excavating, not let's say excavating, maybe I'm going to invoice them for decking, for deck, or I'm going to invoice them for trusses. Um, so I'm going to now share my screen. Then you can use that item on an invoice, but you can also use it on a bill. So an item can actually be 
an income and an expense at the same time, which is, which is very, very powerful. So let me explain it to you. Let me show it to you. Okay, can you see my QuickBooks screen? Wait, down, can you see it? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna be going back over here and I'm going to items. See, this was the chart of accounts that I was explaining. Now I'm going to items. And in the items list, what I'm explaining is, this is really, really important for cost accounting. Um, so I'm gonna to go to item and I'm gonna to go to new. And what I was explaining is, is you have, oh, I was correct, other charge. So you have types of items. You have service, non-inventory, other charge, subtotal group, discount payment. Those are just functions. These are the three that you, um, unless you turn on inventory, you'll have an inventory item. So service means income. That's how I equate it into to, uh, QuickBooks sort of a, a terminology. But the most powerful thing is that um, we're just going to create an item called flooring right now. And you can even have items, sub account of sub items. Um, and what, what you do immediately is that this now has to be tied to the chart of accounts. So I'm going to go and tie it to an account in the chart of accounts called cost of materials. No, I'm just going to make it simple. I'll call it for construction job costs, okay? So I'm gonna set that up because everything in QuickBooks is on the fly. I'm gonna set that up and I'm gonna make it a COGS account because it's the cost of doing, uh, building the home. So I've set up a COG account in the chart of accounts. And just to show you that, in my chart of accounts, I'm in a sample company. In my chart of accounts, I have There it is, job costs, okay? So this is my chart of accounts and I have it under cost of goods sold. So I have now, if you understand what I was saying, which I know it was hard to, to follow, I have now created a sub account and I only did it at one level, but I've tied this directly to the chart of accounts. So here's a powerful part. And I always say, never read the sentence, it means nothing. Um, so, but I'll read it to you. This service is used in assemblies or is performed by a subcontractor or partner. That means absolutely nothing to me. But here's what it really does, is if you click on this button, your, um, sorry, I did this wrong, by the way. This is construction income, okay? I, I, I apologize. See where it says income account now? It's saying you need to put an income account in there. So I'm gonna put construction income in there. I told you earlier that service means income. That's what it means. So I'm gonna set that in there. So I added that to the chart of accounts. When I didn't click on this, and I just really want you to watch it, it gave me no word. It just said account here, right? So what I'm trying to tell you is that service means income. So it wants an income account here. This item is only good for invoices. But as soon as I click on this button, I now it now tells me very specifically, you can use this as an income account and you can use this as an expense. Okay, so, so why would I do that? Okay, so um, I put in flooring and um, now I'm gonna use my expense account job costs, okay? So, in an invoice, in an invoice, I would be in, invoicing somebody and I'd say flooring, and I would put, you know, wood flooring materials. I'd probably make, create another item called subcontractors down here and then put labor. And I would put, $30,000 because it's expensive. Okay, so I've created that. I'm gonna just go ahead and save this invoice with a name. Okay, and I'm in a sample company. So I'm gonna save this invoice and I'm gonna go to your 
general report your profit and loss, which is under company and financial. And I'm going to do this on the accrual basis. And you can see I just created 30,000 of income. You see how that works? Okay. Um, now, I am also going to go, now I'm going to, I can do a bill or a check. The, the point is, is I'm doing an expense. I'm going to go to banking, write checks. This is where I told you before that you want to go to banking, write checks. Please never go into the, I'm just, the bank, I'm going to check on the checking account right here. Never go and enter a transaction directly into your register. Or a deposit. Don't go in here and say uh, this. It completely allows you to. There's no problem. It allows you to. It just causes crazy things to show up on your reports. So that's the reason why I say not to do that. Um, so I just saved it, but I shouldn't have. Um, so then if I go talking about items again, if I now I'm in, I'm in uh, banking, write checks. So I'm now gonna go, okay, I'm gonna pay, um, oh, I'm just gonna make it simple for us, Lowe's, okay? Now I'm gonna write a check to Lowe's because it's a vendor, because I want to, I want to record the cost of the flooring because I have the flooring income, but now I want to know what the flooring, I, I need to know this so I know if I'm making any money on the job, right? So I'm going to, an item also I want to tell you is the lowest level of detail in QuickBooks. And I already told you it's most powerful. So in your tabs down here, you have two tabs. You have an expense tab and you have an items tab. Now, what I would tell you is that an expense tab is, some businesses don't need items, but in this type of business, you would want to use it. Um, and items can be all kinds of different things. I'm just using the construction industry right now. So in the expense tab, I would put things like telephone costs, or I put things like insurance, or I, I mean, overhead type of expenses. So if I could rename this, I would call this direct, or I would call this overhead expenses, not just expenses. Um, with items, I would call this direct expenses. That's what I would rename this as. So this is a direct expense to the job. So I would put flooring in and I would say that it cost me $10,000. So in my profit and loss, I now have const construction income of $30,000. And I have, guess what? Job cost of 10. So it just went to job cost because it was tied to that in the chart of accounts. But if I went over here, if I could even, let me remember who this client is, Karen Peacock. If I went to report and I went to job profitability detail and I put in Karen Peacock, I could pull up a report. Well, this got a lot of other stuff in it, sorry. Oh, um, where did my stuff go? Oh yeah, here. Sorry, just ignore everything. But um, in here, the $30,000 of income. And I have to actually, something very important that I forgot. I'm gonna go to banking right checks. Um, in this item, in this account. Okay, so under edit, I'm missing, I'm missing a part in QuickBooks. Oh no. Let me go to vendor center and I'm gonna go to Lowe's. Okay, and I'm gonna show you a couple really quick tricks that I use every single day. Um, in here, I needed to put Karen Peacock. I forgot that. I need to sign it to the job. So, so back to my example is that it's showing here that the flooring was $10,000 in cost and that the income was $30,000. So, I mean, 
So you can imagine that you can build a whole house and know what it, what the income was per per line item or per phase and know what the expenses was. Um, and items can be used very uh, strategically um, for every industry. So it takes a lot of thought process. If it's very clear in the construction industry, but I've used it in so many different industries. It just takes some thought processes. So. I want to just at least get rid of this. I'm going to go to view up here. I want to get rid of this. And I'm just going to say top icon bar. That put it up here. So I got rid of that and I just now have a bigger screen. Um, things that, uh, that are unusual that I want to talk to you about is, first of all, if you press control F or edit fine, I hate this simple thing, okay? I don't like it at all. Um, I like the advanced, maybe because I've been using QuickBooks too long and there was no simple, but so if I cannot find a transaction and I'm looking for a transaction, I can do anything. I can find it by all kinds of different ways, but, but edit find is it goes through QuickBooks and it shows me every single transaction that had a hundred dollars in it. So this is a really easy way to find a transaction. Then, um, also, if you've made a mistake, if you're, I've seen QuickBooks, um, maybe, maybe, uh, um, this might be too much, but I'm going to collapse this. Um, so you, in a balance sheet, your assets here have to match your um, liabilities and equity at the bottom. I've actually seen it come out of balance before, and that's crazy that it can happen. I've seen it. I know how to fix it. But when QuickBooks has made a error, not a user error, like there is something wrong with the software, you know it should be right. And, and um, so software always has little problems. And so what I want, what I'd suggest for you to do is it's just a little working thing is uh, first you want to go to your list and you want to you want to go down to um, accounts and you want to resort your list. So every list you can find, you're going to look for that resort button. You're going to resort your list. Sometimes that takes away the bugs. The other thing you're going to do is you're going to go to file. You're going to go to utilities and then you're going to go to verify data. When you press verify data, what it does is it kind of is like, if you remember, uh, scan disk. It goes out and scans, like, is there, so, so if QuickBooks is going like this, like the data, like, just think about that, instead of matching up like this, it's going to go out and try and move it from this mess to this mess. That's what it's doing. Um, but verified data basically comes back and says, you don't have a problem. There's no problem. Or it says you have a problem. And when it says you have a problem and it says there's errors, then you want to go back to utilities. This is the only time you do this. You don't want to do this on a regular basis or you'll end up with your own version of QuickBooks that nobody can help you with. Um, you're going to want to rebuild data. And it'll back up the company. And it's like I said, it's going to make it all match up. That generally will fix a lot of bugs in your QuickBooks file if you think something phantom is happening in there. Um, does anyone have any questions? I'm trying to go through this kind of fast and hit some highlights. Yeah, we did get a question through on the chat box. It says, how do you make QuickBooks automatically deduct for the Washington State paid medical and family leave tax? Oh, okay, great question. Let's see if there's um, QuickBooks downloaded. First of all, we are being bombarded. If you're doing payroll, we are being bombarded with changes, constant changes. Um, we can't even use 941 quarter one in QuickBooks because it's outdated. Um, so we're going through massive. Anytime if you're doing payroll in QuickBooks, it says you need to do a payroll update every time do it. It's extremely important. So in the employee center, what I'm getting at is QuickBooks automatically downloaded uh, or gave us PFML items, payroll items to use in their garbage. Um, they don't work. So what we have done is we have gone into the payroll information and we simply set it up as, yeah, I think it's PFML. I don't know. 
maybe it's FML. Um, anyway, um, this is what I call it. Um, if you put this in, set up this item, and I, I try to stay out of the, the QuickBooks payroll wizard. So um, I'm just doing this really quick. I'm gonna do PFML, put it in this area of additions and deductions and company contributions. And I'm gonna say set up, and I'm gonna say it's a um, deduction because if you're under 50 employees then the employee pays it. And this is gonna be a lot like the long-term care act that's gonna happen in January. This is how I would set this up as well, or set that up as well, is um, go to deduction, put this in, um, it's going to go to employment security. I'll just quickly add that. And then there's no tax, tax tracking type. We don't get a deduction on our tax returns for it. So it really doesn't need to be on the W-2. Then um, it's not subject to any taxes. So we don't have any taxes checked in here. Then um, it is subject to quantity um, because it's based on wage. And then finally, it's, hit or, it, it, it's really up to you if you want to, I, I would always put it on net pay. And then it's 0.2533%. So I'm not gonna schedule a payment right now. So, Yeah, it's a sample company. That would be bad news if we really had it. Um, so if I were to pay Deborah, her, what did I do wrong? Oh, she's on. Um, I think I did this wrong. I apologize. This payroll item list. There's one part in here. PFML. Next, next, next. Based on, it's not based on hours. Quantity. That pay. Finish. Employees. Pay employees. I don't think this is going to work. Let me, uh, since I do tax returns, it's been a while. Let me go get some, uh, get someone to show me what I'm doing wrong. But you got the basics. I just need to find something. I need to, doesn't PFML, it's supposed to be on quantity, right? Because it's on wages. Yeah, but I don't get that. Can you come help? Okay. Um, so while, I, while my um, handy little person over here, that is my left hand or my right hand, um, when I'm doing the PFML, I, I, I'm missing a part and I, I can't remember what I'm missing because it's been so long. Um, so right in here, I put it in as a deduction, mm -hmm. this, 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 mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. and I put it on quantity. No. Then I can't put it on hours. No, it's on neither. And it's on gross. Oh, that's what I'm doing. I would think it's on. Um, and then it'll calculate it on gross pay. Okay, I was doing on that. Okay, so if we put it in here, there. Okay, one little thing. Sorry about that. Thank you. Um, so it uh, 0.2553 of the total gross wages, and it's a deduction out of the paycheck of 11.27. So I chose net, thinking of where I wanted to see it come out on the pay stub, and you needed to choose gross. So. There you go. Any other questions? Um, there is a question if you offer other QuickBook classes. Oh, are you not seeing my screen? Oh, interesting. Okay. I can see your screen. 
Okay. Um, I'm, yeah, I, I, I think my screen is there. So um, yeah, I, I do a lot of, I used to teach a lot of classes, um, but really what happened was um, I could fill 40, 50 people in a classroom um, and back in the day, but now I only can get three or four people and it costs a lot of money to put on a class. So what I've decided to do is, and, and really this is the better way to go, is, um, is I do one-on-one -on -one training or I have my staff do one-on-one -on -one training. Um, that way we're working directly with your file and I don't train like here, here's how to do it and everything's perfect. I train where you're sitting down and you're doing it with me and then I send you away with homework because I would, I train by you got to do repetitive things to learn QuickBooks. So the class is very economical when I do it that way because I'm not doing everything. The most important thing, the, it, it, the thing you never want to mess with is setting up payroll. That's really, really important to have someone help you set up payroll because it payroll can be tricky and um, lots of lots of issues can come up there. There is one other question before we run out of time and I'm sorry that I missed it, Valerie. It was, um, if there's a way to change the width of the displayed columns, especially when you're in the check register. Um, what I can tell you in there is, uh, this is a lot to look at. Um, I, I can't control these columns. I can't control these columns at all, but you can, if you haven't noticed or seen this yet, the only way you can really control these columns is to control your screen. So you're compacting it. But also, you can also just click on this button right here, one line, and it's easier to read. So when I was talking earlier, do you see this account split? Okay. All that meant was that there's more than one account used in that transaction. I hope that helped. All I do is make the screen smaller. Any other questions? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, um, a simple one. I have 2016 desktop and was wondering if that's gonna work. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with 2016 desktop. It can work forever. Um, the only thing is you cannot do payroll in it. The only reason why you have to buy a new version of QuickBooks is if you want to continue to do payroll and that's every three years, they make you do that. You won't get any support if you call customer support on QuickBooks 20, 2016. And all I can tell you is that from probably 14, I'm gonna say probably 2014 to 2021, there's really no big differences. Um, so, to, I, I get a free version every year, so I'm always using the latest version. But and one thing I would also tell you is, so 16 is fine. But what I would also tell you is don't run out and buy the new version right away. Let everybody figure out the bugs in it and then get it six months after they come out with it because <laughs> it can mess you up. So, so I hesitate when they come out with the new version, which is around November of each year. Um, but obviously, if your your payrolls expire, you can't do payroll. You got to buy it right away. So, any other questions? Yeah. So I I will actually won't be doing payroll, but I'll have to do 1099. Is that going to be an option within the system? I haven't really dug in too yep, deep. With you can do 1099s because 1099s is really you're going to print that on other paper, um, and it has nothing to do with tax tables. So 1099s will still work on 2016. And you're going to find uh, 1099s is kind of a complicated setup. You have to set up your vendor and you have to set what chart accounts to look for. And under vendors is where the 1099 information is because it's hard to find it if you don't know where it's at. So it's under vendors. Um, I would like that. <laughs> Yeah, so what I would suggest, because it will take more than just a few minutes that I have, is honestly, uh, and, and my version right here won't match the 2016 version because they keep messing with how to do 1099s. They've actually made it more complicated. So one way to stay with 2016. Um, the, uh, I would just try to find a YouTube video on how to do 1099. And the basic concept, even if you're in a new version, the basic concept will come across. 
Um, because there's, you've got to map what accounts you want QuickBooks to look into. So it, it doesn't look into telephone expense. It looks into professional fees, right? Because we only give out 1099 for services. We don't give it out for products. We only give it out for services. We only give it out if they're not incorporated. And we only give it out if it's $600 or more, unless they're an attorney. All right, I don't see any other questions coming through. I know I went through really fast. Um, I'm going to just throw something out there. If you have a pen and pencil or pen and paper, I, not a pen and pencil. If you have a pen and paper, um, you may want to write this down. And here's your accounting tip. And what I'm going to tell you is um, I, I, I'm one of those that has to really do, do, do to learn. And um, and I all through uh, even I graduated summa cum laude, and um, and I still didn't know this when uh, this easy easy little thing to learn when I graduated. So if you um, write down asset, if you want to increase an asset, like you want to add a vehicle to your books, that's an asset. If you want to put money in a bank account, that's an asset. So if you want to add an asset, you're going to um, you're going to debit the asset. Okay. So if you're adding, you want to add, you debit. If you want to get rid of that vehicle or get rid of that asset, you're always going to credit. So to increase an asset is a debit. To decrease an asset is a credit. I'm going to go through this very quickly. If you want to um, spend money um, on uh, anything, again, I'll just use something simple. Like I need to spend money on telephone expense. So if I want to record a telephone expense, I'm going to debit. So to increase an expense, I'm going to debit. To decrease an expense, say I got a refund, I is a credit. So to increase an expense is a debit, to decrease an expense is a credit. If you get a new loan, you're increasing liabilities. To increase a liability is a credit. To decrease a liability to pay off the loan is a debit. This is all stuff you need to know in the back of your head. Counting wise, it helps when you're thinking through transactions. If you want to add money to your company or add equity, you're going to credit. If you want to take money out of your company like a draw, you're going to debit. So those are all you have to know in accounting. That's it. And everything else comes naturally. <laughs> um, uh, there was one other thing I was going to say, and I have forgotten it. Um, but, oh, um, if you have a transaction that never ran through the bank account, for example, I can buy a car and it's 100% paid off. It's paid by a loan. So I didn't write a check for that car. If you have a transaction that never enter, goes through the bank account, it's always a journal entry. Always. That's how you get it in the books. So I know that was a lot of information at once, but I hope it was worth your time. Yes, thank you so much, Trisha, for doing this presentation for us. And I will make sure to get this uploaded on our social media pages for anyone that missed it. But I'm also going to share your information for everyone that registered. So if they would like to do that one on one with you, um, they can definitely reach out and hopefully get scheduled with you. But thank you so much for all the information. Thank you, everyone who joined us. Um, again, if you have any questions for Trisha, I'll make sure to include her email and contact information after this presentation. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.